The other first in nation thing that we want to try to show tonight is the React Labs special effort that's going to be possible for us to be able to track what it is that we all are thinking across both here and across the country on this. I want to introduce Professor Philip Resnick from the Department of Linguistics and the University of Maryland Institute for Advanced Computer Studies. Uh, this is really a fascinating effort, and it's the kind of thing that people everywhere are paying attention to. As I said, it's a chance for you to think and know what we're thinking before the pundits have a chance to tell us what it is that we ought to think. Let me introduce Professor Resnick. Thank you. Um, this is pretty amazing. Um, I, I wanted to start by thanking uh, all of you for showing up. Um, and uh, the folks who organized it, and the amazing technology that we just saw, because it's not just a question of developing technology, it's a question of developing technology to do something that is important. Um, and it is, it's very important. I have a son um, who's in college who is also gonna be voting for the first time. Uh, and I gotta tell you, uh, I'm really excited about it. So, um, so let me tell you about, um, uh, why I'm here, a uh, long-haired computer scientist in a political thing. Um, a little strange. Uh, let's see if the clicker works. The low-tech stuff is the stuff that's not going to. OK, so I'm going to use this as the background for a second. And I'll explain why this is, why this is there in a moment. Um, so I study language. Um, I'm a person who, I'm a computer scientist, and I use computational methods to try to understand um, how people use language, try to make computers smarter about language. Um, what's uh, interesting in some of the stuff that I was looking at over the last couple of years uh, has to do with the way that people frame or even spin what they're saying in order to manipulate your perceptions, right? There's a reason that one side calls it a death tax and the other side calls it an estate tax, right? That sort of, uh, or, or when, uh, when Reagan said mistakes were made, it was probably before your time, right? But that particular use of language is actually putting a particular perspective on the event. And I wanted to collect data um, in order to study this stuff. And what I discovered is that collecting data about people's perceptions of political events is hard. Um, what you're looking at up here is the way that uh, data is traditionally collected. A pollster will go and interrupt dinner. <laughs> Um, on, on your landline phone. How many of you actually have landline phones, just out of curiosity? Look at that. Um, yeah, so, so they're not reaching most of you guys. Um, and they're not getting to ask you questions. And the fact is, those of you with landline phones, how many of you would actually take the time to answer questions if they called you at dinner time? Not a couple, a couple. Um, so that's really not where things are now in terms of getting data, that the traditional methods aren't working because this is, uh, is, um, is more like the world that we live in now, um, right? Um, it's not that people don't want their opinions known. People, you guys are expressing your opinions all the time. You're probably, some of you are doing it right now. I see people going like this at the moment. Um, but uh, we need to find a way to tap into that information. And so about a year and a half ago, as a, as a project here at University of Maryland, I decided I was going to try to build something that did that. Um, so, um, sorry, I have, to, I have to look back to see what I'm saying. What, what I have been working on um, is something that takes advantage, is aiming to take advantage of three really big trends that are happening, right? One of the trends is that mobile devices are becoming more and more and more ubiquitous. The, another uh, is... That, um, that, that television is evolving into a two-way medium. People are getting used to sort of reacting to stuff. People are trying to figure out how to do that. And the third, um, of course, is that social media is a way for people's voices to be heard. It's, that's a familiar concept. To you guys, the landline phone call at dinner time is the unfamiliar concept. So I decided I was going to try to build something to take advantage of these trends. Um, and I won't go into a lot of detail. This is just a picture of the different ways that people are trying to collect data. There's traditional polling, which has a, a bunch of important advantages, um, but some disadvantages also. I've just, I've just mentioned a couple. There's something called a Nielsen dial or dial studies where they equip you with a, with a, a focus group with a piece of hardware, right? So you'd, you guys would be sitting here, except there'd probably only be about 30 of you. Um, and you'd have a piece of hardware with a dial on it, um, and you'd go between a smiley face and a frowny face to say what you thought of what I was saying in real time to get that unmediated, instantaneous reaction to what you were hearing. Um, 
And uh, that only gives you one dimension, you know, like it, don't like it. Whereas if you want to get deep insight, you need to manage to ask more questions than that. And then, of course, you have the, 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 the sort of emerging world. You've got Twitter, which you can analyze. I'm a language guy. I have colleagues, some of them in this room. We analyze the language on social media. Um, and that can give us a lot of information about what people are thinking. But frankly, it's the Wild West out there. Um, it's very hard to analyze what people are tweeting and get a clear, I mean, yes, you can do a decent job getting an idea of if they're feeling positive or negative about something. But again, it's very hard to get the detailed information. You also don't get to know who the people are on Twitter. Is this somebody who is, if they are leaning conservative, is it a fiscal conservative or a social conservative? That's not information that it's easy to pull, say, from their Twitter profile. Right? And that demographic information is important to understand the different groups and what's going on. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different ways uh, that people have tried to tap into information um, before. I want to give you a brief example here of um, tech, the technology that you're going to be using tonight. We did a dry run. Um, uh, I had um, uh, some folks I was collaborating with. It was about 60 or 65 students at a college in the Southwest. Um, and uh, most of them, when you asked them in the questions at the beginning, if they felt favorably or unfavorably toward Romney, felt unfavorably. Um, this is their responses to Romney's acceptance speech when he accepted the nomination. And you'll notice there's an awful lot of dislike there. The dotted lines uh, are, are disagree, right? So you might come out of this saying, well, a lot of people who didn't like Romney disagreed with a lot of what he said, big deal. But if he can drill down into the temporal information and get finer grain, there's something that really stands out here. You see that big spike there on the left, the big solid line? That's a place where a whole bunch of people agreed with Romney by tapping the agree button that I'll be telling you about. So right there, something happened that asking them after the fact wouldn't have caught. If you drill down, there's the particular 45-ish mm, seconds or so where people were responding strongly. And here's what he was saying. He was talking about optimism, and he was talking specifically about the immigrant experience, if you go, if you go look at what he was saying up there. Now, if you go look at the demographics of the responses that came in for one sentence in that 45 second period, right? The ones who woke up at night hearing that voice telling them that life in a place called America could be better. And you look at who it resonated with, who were the agrees and who were the disagrees. Well, you get a lot of people who are unfavorable toward Romney still agreeing, but here's where it gets really interesting. It's only a small example, but it's still an interesting example. Right, we had a mixed group people who were Hispanic and people who were, who were Caucasian. Um, and you see a heavy density of, uh, of Hispanic response, of people resonating there. Now, this is one example. One example does not make a journal article. <laughs> Sorry for those of you thinking of going into academia. Maybe in some fields, but not here. Um, and so, but this is suggestive. What it tells you is that there is fine-grained information that we can get, and I, I don't mean just for purposes of telling Romney to talk about immigration more when he's in Arizona. Yes, I, you know, that's useful information for campaigns, but for understanding what people care about, for listening to people in order to affect the public policy, to show that people are actually listening. You guys in this room watching the debate as opposed to being home doing something else. That's what's important. So, what can we do with all that data? I'm not going to go into a long list, but I can tell you there's a ton of things that you can do if you've got large-scale, fine-grained data about people's reactions to events. You can do traditional political science, but on a scale like you've never seen before. I'm collaborating with a professor at, um, at UC Davis, uh, Professor Amber Boydston, who is running the React Labs Educate uh, event tonight. We collaborated on it. Um, she is the lead person who put it together. I'll tell you about more about that in a second. Um, and, and other political scientists. In addition, you can do behavioral research, stuff that really gets at a lower level, looking at people's perceptions and reactions and the way they think about things. Um, as a language researcher, that was the whole point that I started out with, getting an idea of how people were reacting to stuff, right? In order to say, wow, you know, that particular way of putting things, people recognize that as spin. And the reason I think that's interesting 
is, well, I'll give you an analogy. Magicians, to, to pull a rabbit out of a hat, people, know an awful lot about your visual system and how you pay attention to things. They may not know it like a scientist, but they know it because they know how to distract you, right? Um, but uh, politicians know a lot, a lot about your linguistic and cognitive systems. They can do the same thing magicians do, right, to distract you um, or to direct your attention to a particular place. I want to understand that process in terms of the linguistic and cognitive system. So I'll wrap up by telling you what's happening tonight. What's happening tonight is an event that you are a part of. You are uh, among thousands of students across the country who signed up for React Lab, uh, Labs Educator, rather their instructors did. Um, and uh, they are participating in this, up to 12,000. We don't know how many of them will actually be participating, but it, it could be 12,000 plus another almost 5,000 at the University of Denver, we'll find out. Um, people who are participating in this sort of groundbreaking, we're going to try to collect data in this way. Um, and I, I just want to say a big shout out for a second to some people in the back of the room. There are the names. I know that I'm running out of time here, so, so I, I just want to say th many thanks because a technical endeavor like this um, is, is a very difficult thing. Um, and finally, I'm going to say what's happening tonight. What's happening tonight is you guys, hopefully, on your mobile devices, your laptops, go to that URL, app.reactlabs.org slash 105. And it should bring you in to a bunch of survey questions that you will go ahead and answer. Um, and then you'll get a screen like the one that you're seeing up there that's going to show the candidates. And it has four buttons, agree, disagree, spin, and dodge. If you hear something that uh, Romney says that you agree with, tap Romney and tap agree. That's it. That's all you do. If it's if you, something you disagree with, same thing, just disagree. If you think you're hearing spin, hit spin. If you think you're hearing dodging the question, hit dodging the question. And, and answer the survey questions if they pop up at you. A bunch of them um, are going to pop up at the end. That would be great for you to answer. Um, that's really all there is to it. What we are going to do is on that screen, we are going to, assuming that everything works well on the tech side, we are going to put up the live real-time reactions of the people in the group that, uh, that uni this University of Maryland event is a part of. Um, and we'll see in real time how people are reacting, and we'll see what we can make of it, and we'll talk more about it at the end. Thanks. Thank